How's it going, guys? We have a medium difficulty question for pharmacology for step one. Exceedingly high yield. U.S. assembly loves this stuff, okay? Uh, so before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 24-year-old woman, she's going on a whale watch next weekend, and she's worried because she has history of motion sickness. Physician prescribes diphenhydramine. And the question is asking which of the following mechanisms of action is most responsible for the effectiveness of diphenhydramine for this patient's motion sickness. So let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, alpha-1 agonism. Wrong fucking answer. You need to know that alpha-1 agonism will constrict arterioles, increase blood pressure. And also, if given intranasally, alpha-1 agonism is used for nasal decongestion, okay? Decrease inflammation within the nose. Uh, this would be phenylephrine, not phentolamine. Phentolamine is an alpha-1 antagonist. Phenylephrine is an alpha-1 agonist, as well as oxymetazoline and mitodrin, M-I-D-O-drin. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, agonism of beta-3, wrong answer. This, in theory, could refer to mirabegrin, which uh, could be used for urgent continence. Absolute nonsense. I've never seen it assessed. Uh, you need to know that uh, anti-muscarinic effect, anticholinergic, due to oxybutynin is the classic high-yield treatment for urgent incontinence, notably on 2CK. Uh, students get hysterical about this uh, drug called mirabegrin, fancy-sounding drug that's a beta-3 agonist, could also be used. Never fucking seen it assessed. Absolute nonsense. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C agonism of GABA B. Wrong answer. This refers to baclofen, which is used to treat spasticity, classically in multiple sclerosis. I've seen it uh, in one vignette that wasn't MS, but just classically, the association. Patients who have spasticity in MS, uh, you assembly likes baclofen, and it agonizes. It not only does it act on GABA-B, but it's an agonist, not an antagonist. Okay, you really need to know that. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, antagonism of alpha-2. Wrong answer. A bit of an unusual mechanism of action uh, could refer to mirtazapine, uh, which is an agent that can treat both depression and anorexia at the same time. It stimulates appetite. You could be aware of that for psych, for 2CK in particular. I've seen it assessed once, okay? So uh, patients who have severe uh, uh, anorexia, low BMI, uh, in the setting of depression, mirtazapine is effective. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, antagonism of H2, wrong answer. Although diphenhydramine is a histamine receptor antagonist, it blocks H1 receptors, not H2. So H2 antagonism being cimetidine, ranitidine. Okay, that's for stomach acid, H2. H1, in contrast, is for allergies. Okay, completely different. Wrong fucking answer. Choice F, antagonism of M3, antimuscarinic, is the correct answer. So diphenhydramine, as I just fucking said, is a, an H1 receptor antagonist, but it has nasty anticholinergic side effects, exceedingly high yield. Okay, you need to know that the first generation H1 blockers, i.e. diphenhydramine and chlorpheniramine, have nasty anticholinergic side effects. So, But here's the weird thing, is that for whatever fucking reason, anticholinergic effects help motion sickness. So there's actually a, a separate agent called scopolamine, scopolamine, uh, which can be used for motion sickness. Patient gets a scopolamine patch before getting on a flight, going on a boat, and that can be used to treat motion sickness. But because diphenhydramine and chlorpheniramine, the first gen H1 blockers, nasty anticholinergic side effects, that helps motion sickness in this case, okay? We like to avoid H1 blockers in patients because they can cause drowsiness, that's also high yield, and they can cause cognitive dysfunction, including delirium, especially in elderly, okay? We like giving second-generation H1 blockers, such as loratadine, instead when we're talking about uh, anti-allergy effect. You know the deal, I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.